What is happening, everybody? My name is Julius, and I am here once again for another podcast that you are hopefully ignoring. I am here for chapter 16, and I'm with a new person, another special guest. Each week, I try to get someone new for you guys to listen to, because uh, it can't just be only me for uh, (laughs) weeks on end. I am here with a very special guest. It is Mr. Harrison. Hello, hello. Harris, come come a bit closer to the mic. Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing, my friend? Doing good. It's been a nice day so far. It's, yeah. Uh, start, middle of weekend. It feels like the the end of the beginning is <laughs> all over the place. But doing all right. Doing all right. Grab some. Did some errands today and just chilled. Yeah. yeah. Just chilled. The the unique thing about how we know each other. It's very interesting because I've actually mentioned you on this series. Oh, before. really? I have. I did not know that. I, I have because <laughs> we know people. We oh, know yeah, people yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure <laughs> in common from different parts of this city and different schools, multiple at this point. And plus, yeah. we also work with each other at the same job, mm-hmm. at at the same coffee place. Um, and it, that was the weirdest thing when I met you. You did seem familiar because I think we did go to the same school for a bit. But we also know Exley. You uh-huh. went to Loxa, I so you, you know people like Brian and Sebastian and all them. Uh, so. When meeting you, I was just so confused. Like, uh, fate does exist. Do you mm-hmm. think fate exists on a certain level? Oof. Uh, I mean, I got it. I think I said a joke about that like earlier today. I, I guess yes. Like uh-huh. in some capacity, yeah. I don't know if I like actively believe in it, but I like to, you know note when it feels like it's happening i guess like Mm -hmm. like you i guess mentioned prior i god i can't remember what happened earlier today something while my dad and i were out i don't i can't if i try to recall it i'll just elongate the thought process but uh when when an instance happens i like will casually say like you know, fate or, you know, destiny. I think actually that's what it was. It was destiny. Something, 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 something destiny. But I was, you know, I wasn't being serious. I wasn't like, you know, with my whole self agreeing like this is, a ha- this is absolutely <laughs> supposed to happen. It was like a throwaway joke or throwaway, you know, just moment. But mm-hmm. I think, I guess as part of that, yeah, I'd like to call out when it feels like fate or destiny mm-hmm. are in effect a hidden meaning behind yeah. most things. Yeah. That that's a nice thought, right? I I mean, I guess maybe it's just calling out coincidences and trying to and putting a bigger label on it, but even that still is bringing attention to one or the other. Yeah. Like fate destiny or somewhere in between. It it's insane because you you notice especially as you get older cuz I I'm I'm getting old. I'm an old man, especially compared <laughs> to you. You're a youngster. <laughs> okay? I I think you recognize uh, how things are connected more often mm-hmm. and and maybe that's just a hope because once you get to the end of your lifespan you just hope it all mattered at some on some level and i know i'm not i'm not senile or anything there, there's but, old man and then there's old man there's, <laughs> there's old man um but i start thinking because especially because i had a birthday recently yeah um congratulations again Happy th- birthday. thank you I, I made it 25 <laughs> a quarter uh lived a quarter of a century you start wanting to hope that there is meaning to whatever it is you're doing you know yeah. and and here we are two baristas do you find much meaning in what we do Ooh, uh okay well i like barista work a lot and mm. i think i feel i like it because i like when it's easy and i don't like it when it's hard i feel like <laughs> i mean it's it's a job that i can really sink into i started it when i was a uh, junior or sophomore i think soft sophomore in high school because i was doing it uh right before COVID happened um it's a job that i find familiar and right now i think i'm using it as like a safety thing but i guess of importance um i mean i feel like i like talking to people at the mm-hmm. beginning of the day it's a you know er- early early morning uh to you know later early morning is just an, an interesting point to talk to someone because it's like you know, it's very likely the, you're likely the first person you've talked to that day. I met a lot of interesting people. There was one person came in and he like showed me these playing cards that he had made and he had like a bunch in his trunk and I you know was talking to him and he said, actually, let me go grab some. And he gave me like a set of playing cards that he designed. So oh, wow. that felt impactful. I probably, I bet he has gone to other barista locations, uh, you know, coffee shops and talked to someone and didn't get as much interest from 
the worker with how with the playing cards he designed. But we engaged in conversation. I liked listening to him. I still have some of his business cards. I still have that playing card set that he gave me. And, you know, he got excited about the thing that he made. So I, you know, it's, it's moments like that that I really enjoy. But I don't, again, the, the, the is what we do important? I feel like... It's a big, including it's, this podcast. It's a big question. It's a I don't know. Um, I mean, I like it. I mm-hmm. like it. For, I like it for now. I, uh, if and when I stop doing it in the future, I will look back liking the moments probably more than disliking the moments. Um, but God, yeah, is it important? I feel like. Well, actually, well, to go on maybe another quick little tangent. Socially, I. I mean, there's a lot of stuff happening right now with like the Starbucks workers strike or yeah. the workers. You know, you know, we're probably not quite there yet if I'm going to be honest, but we're boiling to the precipice of a big strike or a big revolt or something Mm -hmm. from not necessarily just barista slash food workers slash, you know, grocery workers, et cetera, but like the working class as a whole. Yeah. And I mean, if that's, I mean, you know, 50 years and now, 50, 100 years now, when we look in the future and we can pinpoint back to when these revolutions started saying like, hey, it was, you know, such and such Star- Starbucks union that tried to start that led to these conversations that led to these conversations that led to these conversations that boom explosion socially. I mean, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. To, to think that we in some small part, not you and I at Charlie's coffee house, but we as a collective <laughs> of people who are of a subgenre of working class people started a big revolution that kind of a needed to happen and b was destined to happen yeah a o destiny let's go <laughs> well at least at least we were uh, uh, i like the word subsect that you said mm. because we i think at our work specifically um have a privilege in that we don't have to deal with we, we have to deal with some uh harrowing parts of this business but i don't think to the level of something like oh, a Starbucks. Yeah. And you uh, you worked there. I did. I did. So, I worked at two different Starbucks locations. One was an official Starbucks. Um, I was a partner. And the other one I did afterwards was uh, connected to a star market. So I was technically a star market employee. Mm-hmm. But with my understanding of Starbucks prior, I kind of fit, uh, fit right into that nicely. And it, it, was di- it was different, like, benefits, different set- setup situation. But it was all, you know, Starbucks products and stuff. So sure. I did use the same... Uh, know how yeah so when it comes to like clientele and atmosphere it's probably very different to what we have right now yeah you know because we have uh in terms of our our regulars let's say usually more cool than yeah no 100 percent. you know i i think both of us have our war stories Mm -hmm. as it were but uh when it comes to the the usual it's not too strenuous and plus we have to work uh one person Per shift, pretty yeah. much, usually. Uh, so you'd imagine it being like twenty four seven, or at least what each shift is insane. <laughs> but it's it's really lax. I think I think def- definitely part of that is location. Mm-hmm. Where it's like a small town place, and we deal with small town people. It's almost um, hidden. It yeah, actually kind of. <laughs> um, but I mean, I I feel like at its best, it feels so personal, and at its worst, it's like you know. T- tough shift today it's yeah. not like at its like i mean there i mean did you you saw that um mm. the there was a viral video like earlier this week of some starbucks worker who like eight hour shift and he had a breakdown and oh, I, wow. didn't, I didn't watch the video i just saw people talking about it but i mean like you know it can get pretty bad but mm-hmm. our particular i guess subset subset of like you know less you know not starbucks not pete's or any of the bigger name things not uh, not not a. Uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Chain. Yeah. The um, franchise. Yeah. We're, we're, a, we're a smaller place. So while we have that same sort of environment, the highs can feel different and the lows can also feel very different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember having a shift where I was in the closing. Uh, I'm a closer. Yeah. So I had the closing hour, the mm-hmm. last hour of us being open and a whole... <laughs> <laughs> this is before you start working. Oh man! So before, I, like, er, like later in this, earlier in the summer, or like earlier, last year, last year, uh, probably earlier, just this year. Okay, earlier it, pr- springtime, last, almost last year. I'm still trying to get out of the school mentality, <laughs> like school, school year, blah blah blah. We had a, or I guess the the right way of saying it is, I had <laughs> a person come in who was the head of a political campaign. I guess local politics. There was a guy oh, wow. who was running for something local. I don't know the name. I don't remember. But they were scheduled to have a photo shoot happen. And 
it was within our last hour, so we weren't closed. They reserved the space, but it wasn't for you know an extra hour. Let's say yeah, they weren't gonna, they weren't going to stay there for closing. They were right. working from where they got there until closing. And yes, okay, so and what? about like maybe thirty people showed up, and it was. In, and I was on my own. And you're on your own. Yeah, yeah. So I was like that video you're talking about <laughs> with this guy freaking out. I mean, I tried my best not to show it, but I was also showing like, listen, guys, I didn't know about this. I'm one person. There's a whole army of you guys who are here. And it, I was supposed to be out of here in a little bit. So I, you know, for the past, for the past hour, half hour, I thought I was going to be out of here. Now I'm. Stressed up the wazoo. Yeah, man. it It's pretty crazy. I mean, I, I completely uh, sympathize with people who are, you know, champion workers' rights. And, uh, you know, because you're right. It is a work. It, it's a class issue that we yeah. got going on. I mean, people in the service industry get treated like shit mm-hmm. a lot, you know. And I've heard stories from people who work at fucking restaurants, coffee yeah. places. Um, <laughs> and I don't know how... You, You've been working with this kind of job for a couple years, minus the pandemic. Yes. Uh, so, so you kind of were initiated with that whole environment. Yeah. I mean, my uh, this was in, in retrospect, Starbucks and coffee was like my first job job. I had I was employed by my synagogue for a little bit doing like TA and organizing work. That was really nothing. Right. I worked at a children's theater company that I used to attend and that, beca- that started as a volunteer and then became like, we'll pay you a little bit work. Um but like you know, double, fill fill out a W two and do the blah 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 and taxes and all that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. This like that was my first time, and then the pandemic hit, and then I I remember, uh, I was going out with friends for dinner when we got the email from the school that was like get out before the weekend ends, and we were like, <laughs> oh okay, we thought this was optional leaving, but now we're told <laughs> to move. So I we were walking to dinner, and I pull out my phone. I was like, hi boss's name or whatever i know i'm scheduled to be here on thursday but the school is kicking us out and i don't live in this state oh my so God. um but yeah i mean this this is sort of the experience i had and i had a, a brief job like last summer i was a dishwasher at a movie theater that needed a dishwasher um so that it, it, it was different but i mean doing something something food industry is sort of all i have known adult job wise mm-hmm. at the moment is and you said with this job that we both have, it's yeah. kind of it's a right now job. Yes. And what's yes. what's the next job like the the one? Well, for you? I mean, I'm a I'm a theater major, mm-hmm. so probably <laughs> something prob- in the prob- performance probably area? not probably not exactly what I want. I have a few ideas. Um, right now, the most uh, prevalent is I'm probably going to audition to uh, join the Irwindale Renaissance Pleasure Fair next, oh, cool. sp- which, which I think goes in the spring. Um, uh, in, in my experience in theater, I have sort of liked doing classics every now and then I'm wearing my em- Emerson's Shakespeare society hat oh, right now. <laughs> um, so it's, it's a thing I didn't used to like that. I sort of like now I definitely not like the most well versed. You'll find any, any other, you know, Lar- lar- larger tone theater guys who are probably a bit more into it than I am, but it's something I like, and I've seen other friends do Renaissance Fair work, and I think that'd be pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, other th- ideas I've had if that one doesn't pan out, I've auditioned for a few like escape rooms oh, wow. that have, uh, you know, I've I've tried getting back to them, they've tried getting back to me, and either way, one of us drops the conversation just because of Indeed or whatever job messaging platform we mm-hmm. use. Um, and then my like larger plan is to maybe head out to Oregon for their Shakespeare Festival, but that plan is slowly becoming pushed more into the future and potentially change changing up for if something else comes in the way. But right now I'm liking where we are right now. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it is a for now job, but it's also uh, you know, it's it's a for now job, but it's also a you know budge or don't job. I yeah. I'm living at home. I work very close to home. Uh, this is my hometown still, so it's not like my parents moved and I moved back in with them at their new place or anything. I, I have been in this area for a while now, and now I'm back here after being after doing college, cross country. So I feel a little stagnant. So really, if when when the button when the when it clicks that I need to start doing something is when I'll probably start doing something. But I mean, in this interim period, 
I'm where I'm at. Is the is the because uh, because we talked about you know uh, w- the job being obviously for now and all that and it, this job is also kind of foot in the door you know because of yeah. all the people we meet oh know? yeah like uh, performers directors writers and all that have you how do you do you pitch yourself do you kind of sell yourself or do you just try to talk I to them? D- I don't honestly uh-huh. <laughs> I honestly um I mean like not near I mean like one of our other coworkers, Liz, who does the the art and stuff, I feel like she, even like she markets her stuff all the time yeah. just because of how the story is laid out and the you know the passion she has and the forwardness she has. Like I a don't have that set up and b don't really have that drive. I've just always felt so it's a thing I need to either get over or switch careers. Mm-hmm. Uh, the marketing yourself is just so tough, and with my mentality of like I don't want to I don't want to be annoying. I don't want right. to bother you. It's so hard to say please. Give me a job, or please, you know, because <laughs> you you never want to do that. The <laughs> whole like, please re- try, like, think about me, remember me. I'm gonna be so loud and so out there that you think that when you need someone who's so loud and so out there, you'll think of me like that. Save pu- me. Pushing, pushing yourself on to someone mentality of like, like, but not being desperate. Also, it's so there was like there were there was a there was a group of people like a few weeks ago, like mid mid October that and they they were talking about like being on set and like. Oh man, back back! I I, I don't work anymore because if I did, I would just be yelling at everyone. Camera, I, I you know I was hearing all these buzzwords of like I don't want to do that, but mm-hmm. I didn't want to interject their conversation. Mm-hmm. I was working. I had just given them a bunch of drinks. They sat down at the coffee shop to meet each other. <laughs> I wasn't going to chime in and say, "Well, actually, have you considered me for any of your upcoming pro?" Like it's so hard. Like. I find it so hard to do that. I also don't want to do that and I don't want to have to do that, but I'm going to eventually either need to, or, you know, find something else or option three, the, the temporary job becomes the full job. Or like, I, I, I don't think I, I, if I continue on in this direction, I could do like, I, I, there's other food service things that I could be familiar with and learn and, and grow and blah. But I mean, ideally the goal is stick with what I know and just eventually, kick into gear is there a natural way of getting into that conversation like seeing them over there and you know bringing yourself up do you think honest, a natural honest way? to god the most natural way has always seemed like events geared towards it uh-huh. like if you're going to you know uh you know like a a, a, a fundraiser or a social gathering for a stage or sh- like you know I, yeah. I, i'm trying to articulate but like um God, there were uh, the the Los Angeles um, section of my college that I never went to, but I know a lot of people who did. They had like a young Hollywood event and like uh, all these all these people from my college who come out here for the L.A. event, they have to get an internship and they almost always become like manager or assistant or ma- manager or uh, agents assistants. And that's like a shitty job. Yeah. I hear all of them complain all the time, but like they're part of the industry and they got to go to this event that was like people who are working in the casting and producing and dubbing and blah, blah, blah industry in Hollywood. Here's this giant thing that you can convene at with all of these people. And like, you know, that environment seems a lot more fitting for putting yourself out there and trying to meet other people who are in the industry and can help you with certain things as opposed to, you know, the off chance that I meet someone while I'm working and then have to reach out to them as the worker who has then, you know, broken out of my, out out of the shell that I'm in because of the job and you know socially to you know pester them. It's it's yeah. I feel like the most natural way is events that call for it, but you either have to find those or go to those or pay for those or luck into them. I feel mm-hmm. like I feel like all the things I just said <laughs> <laughs> with the the fair that the dream as it were for you was that ever like did you watch a lot of fantasy films growing up i mean yeah yeah what was how how did you get inspired into wanting to get in that i just remember like watching things with my parents i would always be like the villain is like so much fun i would love to do something like that like uh you know, not knock on wood, not the best example, but I always remember thinking that like Lucius Malfoy was like the most fun character mm-hmm. in that series. Yeah, and you know, my parents would show me all these other things, and uh, God, one of my one of my favorite movies to do it to list a better franchise yeah. series story. <laughs> um, uh, my my parents and my family love Stardust. Oh, uh, okay. The Neil Gaiman mo- uh, book that became a movie, and the cast is just fantastic. Mark Strong plays this, uh, you know 
evil, twisted, snarky, sarcastic prince with like long hair for which which for Mark Strong is very it's an odd picture. <laughs> it's alien. It's yeah. It's, but here's the thing: it, that was my first picture of Mark Strong. So now seeing him bald, it's like ah, bald Mark Strong. But that's just this is Mark Strong. Um, God, but like you know, just all all of these things, and you know, watching Star Wars with my dad, and mm-hmm. you know, I, God, I didn't watch Narnia. I don't know why I thought Narnia. My, mo- <laughs> my mom, my mom loves the Narnia books, and we've but we've you know, she's never seen the movies because she doesn't want to. But like just just watching things, I like stories, and I always remember thinking like I would love to do that type of thing in that story or in some other story. And you know, villain roles just seem really fun, and that sort of. St- I guess started my like I want to do things like this Mm -hmm. and whether that's on camera or on stage or you know through my (laughs) through the room microphones um it's all it's it's been a thing I've enjoyed the concept of but it's just such a hard world and I don't I, I would like to do it but I don't know exactly if I am ready for that yet yeah well it's a lot I yeah I know one of your I, I don't know if it's a love, but one of your likes, maybe, to say it's something we've talked about in the past. We were talking about it during the shoot we did, the mm-hmm. Halloween shoot. Yeah. Um, we talked about a little bit about uh, Doctor Who. Oh, yeah. I my, my uh, God, I didn't I, – I, I was never huge on it. My dad, my dad and my sister are actually rewatching it right now. They're going through some of the Tenet stuff. Oh, okay. Um, I, I mean – I cannot speak to a whole lot of that story. That is, that is a universe that I am vastly removed from. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that's just that's another thing. Like, uh, I, I I would watch these stories with my family and like resonate with certain aspects of the characters and the story that were just appealing. And I didn't want to like, I didn't want to write it. I didn't want to stand behind a camera and film it. And I understand the passion that people have for all those things. I was like, I kind of want to do that character. That feels like a really fun way to be a part of this story is to be the mustache twirling dude being yeah. all cackly or being the sovereign whatever I'm all wise and whatnot yeah. et cetera like I, <laughs> I liked finding the characters that were really fun and like attached like I just just liking them just like, this, this is so cool I would love to do that is sort was sort of how the mentality came up so not to not to completely veer off from the Doctor Who, but oh, yeah. that was absolutely one of the many things that I ended up watching growing up in some capacity. Um, I just never really stuck with that series overall. Well, well, to tie in what you were saying about the versatility, I mean, the character of that, the oh, Doctor. Oh, yeah. I mean, you have a different actor every time bringing their own yeah. spin. And now we're getting Tenant back, Tenet back for, and, for a short and period. And then that um, guy whose name I can't, I don't know how to pronounce. His name's uh, uh, Sh- uh but from uh, Shuti Gatwa, I think his name is. It, and his last name is NG, are the first two letters, right? I, I think so. Yeah. I, I love, I, A, I love him in sex education. I do, I should learn how to pronounce his name. I find, I got, uh, it was, it was Chiwetel Ejiofor that I learned how to pronounce like in <laughs> 2017 for the first time with the, whenever the Lion King movie came out. And I was like, yeah. now I have that in my head, the pronunciation. <laughs> I just need to get this guy. But I'm, I, I'm, again, I'm not big on Doctor Who. I didn't watch anything. I didn't watch anything from Matt Smith on. Um, but I, I mean, I know Capaldi, I know, uh, Whitaker, uh, Whitaker, yeah. Yeah. Jody Whitaker. Um, yeah. so I mean, I like this actor enough that I'll, I may end up turning up for some of his things, but mm-hmm. I also want to see what the hell they're doing with Ten at first. I know. And, like, yeah. how are they going to, is it going to be him? And then this other guy, is it going to be, are there going to be t- two doctors for some reason? Like I, I really, I remember they announced this is going to be, this is going to be the next guy, guy from sex education, whose name I can't pronounce. I'm really sorry. Is going to be the next <laughs> doctor after Whitaker. Yeah. Surprise! It's not. It's and they're like, what are they, what's going to happen? Is it, are they going to do a bait and switch? Are they just going to bring it back? Because I mean, they brought them back before. There was that like the, the, anniversary the thing anniversary where all special. they all came back and they talked to each other. Mm-hmm. Again, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I just saw that. I didn't watch the show. I didn't watch the episode. I just saw the clips where all the doctors were in chat. Like, oh, that's fun. They made that work. Multiverse. But <laughs> I um, would like to think that I don't know what's going on with Tenet. I haven't seen any anything. of the Whitaker stuff. Oh. The Whitaker okay. stuff. Okay. I, I've only seen clips from here and there because they brought back the master. They brought back uh, uh, Captain Jack. And, and but you, all watched, you watched all of Capaldi, right? I watched uh, the majority of Capaldi's stuff. I don't know what any of those names are. I don't know who <laughs> Captain Jack is. I know, I, know well, I know the Daleks. I know the Cybermen. <laughs> and I know the, the girl who was 
skin who the the flat skin oh girl. yeah yeah and that's that's kind that's kind of all my doctor who villains <laughs> understand flat skin yeah <laughs> the character. so you moisturize it, me moisturize moisture, me it's been a while <laughs> it's been a while since you watched it has any, no it, any, it absolutely who? has i wa- i'm pretty sure i watched all of the eccleson all of the david tennant i found this on the web what siri the? found that on the web <laughs> um and then I def I definitely didn't watch any Matt Smith. I got I saw, again I saw clips of him. I saw clips of Capaldi, and Whitaker. But I have not watched anything since at least David Tennant's era. Is that out of just the dif- disinterest of like who was writing the performance? It was not out of who was writing. It was not out of the performance. It was just a bit of a dense show. And mm-hmm. I remember thinking it is. I remember I remember because I mean. There, there's like a very definitive. I get, probably not. I don't want to say that now. Hmm. There, there is because de, definitive is the wrong word because I don't, don't know how to define it. There are definitely shows and things that just ha- by happenstance were things that my dad and my sister watched that I didn't watch. Yeah, and I was fine with that. Yeah, my dad and my sister watched uh, Firefly. Oh yeah, without me. That was without you. Without me. That, oh that, shit. That, that was that was by reason when I was when I was that age. Whenever I, whatever age I was when they watched it. I could not do scary things. Mm-hmm. I watched Monster House and it fucked me over. So, <laughs> you know, literally, <laughs> lit- li- literally, it <laughs> oh was so embarrassing. God. Did you ever like, catch up on Firefly? I did not know. I've, uh, I've been meaning. I have the, the that movie, the movie that they did on it. Oh, Serenity. Uh, Serenity. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that that's been in my watches. I know we need to get to that. I know we need to get to Firefly. Um. Yeah. Before oh, Serenity. Yo, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's the, what's that guy's name? The like the, the main guy, the Han Solo oh, adjacent. Um, the actor. Yes, name? The actor. Nathan Fillion. I've seen him in some stuff. Mm-hmm. I saw him, God, I saw him in the really weird, um, uh, much ado about nothing oh, that yeah. Joss Whedon yeah. did <laughs> with all of the other, it's like, a modern ah. take on, the, but they still speak in the, the Shakespeare, oh I am big and yeah, he, everything. We, we had just, we, we were doing that unit in like senior year like high school English <laughs> and we found out about that movie and I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to sit down and watch this shit. This is hilarious. Um, so I mean, t- uh, tangent again, based on an actor I like from the, you know, things that I liked him doing, but I have not gotten to Firefly. That was just one of the things that they wanted to watch that I was like, I don't need to be there for that. And I think Dr. Who just kind of was one of them. I watched through Echo and Tenet, And then I was like, these are, you know, I was probably like, 13, 14, I was like, these are hour long episodes. I don't care enough. And you guys, you guys, you guys have fun. I'm going to keep watching fucking like supernatural or whatever the hell I was doing. Um, I, I know that they're bringing that uh, from what I understand, they're bringing doctor who to Disney plus next oh. year, especially they're getting ready for uh, the next one. Okay. Uh, the next doctor. Is it like not, not Disney plus UK only or something like that. I, no, but like, like I think it's just Disney Plus. I would okay, hope it's not. That's UK kind of nice. So they I do like all sorts of stuff, but that would be really nice if it came out just publicly. publicly. Yeah, I I hope that everything is coming back. I don't know about the classic stuff. I don't know if. Oh, I see stuff, what you're saying. But I would I would watch. I would like to rewatch, uh, that series because I grew up watching that series, uh, and even though I've lost track, especially with the Whitaker era, uh, not for any sort of bad reason, just because I don't own. <laughs> I don't have cable, so I'm like, you know, what am I going to watch this on? Yeah, the, the, there's been a number of things that I'm like, oh, I'll watch that later because it's either coming out on a streaming service that I don't have or mm-hmm. it's cable and I don't want to bother setting it up to record, I, you know, which is, pro- which is probably also a, you know, mental block that I need to get over. <laughs> <laughs> the technology's there. I just need to fight a little bit to do it. I know. I, I feel the same way regarding uh, most things in terms of how lazy I am to do yeah. that. Uh, I am in a lazy period, a lazy panda period, and I need to find a way to break myself. No, I, I definitely agree with you there. I need to, <laughs> regardless of career, I sort of need to kick myself into gear and do something else with my life in some capacity. I, de- I should definitely move out of my parents' house, but I'm liking saving money right now. Mm-hmm. Also, my sister needs to move out first. I'm really sorry <laughs> to announce it like that, but she's older. She's moved out before and now is back in again. I, I need some time to live with my parents alone postgraduate <laughs> before I find another place before my older sister, et cetera. Well, um, you move into her room. Sh- there you go. Here's the thing. Oh, no. Her room, her, her room, which is next to my room, we share a bathroom, is, is still her room, is still set up to be a bedroom, but she doesn't live there. When she moved back, we have, we, next to the kitchen, we have this little corner room that we called the breakfast room. Yeah. She moved into the breakfast room. The breakfast room got converted into a bedroom. And because when she was at her apartment, she had a cat, 
the cats in our house are a downstairs animal. They don't roam mm-hmm. all over. They are locked in sort of the kitchen and backyard area with access to the breakfast room. And she's like, I'm bringing my own cat in. So that's now a total of three cats in the house. And the solution was to convert the breakfast room into a bedroom. Her bedroom still stays her bedroom. And she sleeps downstairs now. So, you know, I love I love my family. I love our cats. I love all the blah blah. It's it's great. It's great to be home. Convenience, etc. Money, etc. I am definitely very frustrated by the situation in some capacity, but yeah. not a, not a capacity I I want to I want to or can change. So you know, pick your battles type situation. Yeah, I feel you on the whole moving out situation. I gotta. I um, really gotta. It, it's it. There does come a time where. It's past time, and uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm there yet, but I, because living here, specifically in Los Angeles, is is already a chore. Yep. I mean, especially when it comes to paying either rent or finding a place or knowing how to move yep. out, you know? Yep, yep, it, yep. It's a whole to-do, and sometimes you just don't have the time. Like, my friend Crystal, for example, Miles' girlfriend, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. she moved out uh, to um, Glendale. And apparently really good, really affordable and everything. And that was, that happened. And I don't mean to put her business out there, but that happened because it needed to happen. You know what I mean? I see. Do you feel like you need, uh, mm, well, a motivator, a motivator that helped her was that she needed to move out. Do you think that's something you need? I, yeah, I think so. I think I, I definitely am living back home by a number of circumstances. I, uh, went to school in Boston, mm-hmm. and a lot of my friends went. I mean, my I, and I did all, God, sixteen semesters. No, two, four, six, eight, ten. God, my math. I didn't go to a math school. <laughs> I did all of my semesters. However many there are, COVID also definitely fucked me up. So give cut me a little slack. Uh, no I one was all, doing math over COVID, dude. I did all of my semesters in Boston. I didn't do anything abroad. And then when I graduated, all of my friends who had either done the L.A. program or hadn't done the L.A. program, a number of my college friends that I met in Boston in the East Coast moved to L.A. So when I graduated, I came back home for the summer and so many of the people I knew were here. So I didn't really feel the need right away. And I didn't fi- I didn't find any jobs in Boston. I tried looking a little bit. I could have tried a little harder. Mm-hmm. But nothing was keeping me in Boston. So I was like, I'm going to go home for the summer. We have some travel plans. And I want to move out of my really bad apartment in Boston yeah. and get things set and blah, blah, blah. And I was here in the summer. And I was like, oh, my God. Look at all these new people that are around me. Like, literally in the same places that my friends from high school are in. I take the 134 and the 101 to the 110 mm-hmm. to get to, like, the same general places but with new people. So yeah. And these are people that I have known for the past four years. So there's absolutely the sense of comfort being in my hometown, living at home, having all these people that I've known uh, in, in, uh, in on the East Coast back here, having all my friends from high school still kind of back here. Yeah. Like, I again, I said the word stagnant a little bit ago. I definitely feel like I'm in this grove, in this yeah, the grove, in this, <laughs> in, in this group. <laughs> <laughs> we going to get political? It's the- <laughs> um, and yeah, I think definitely some something absolutely could kick me out of it. I'm very... I'm very fortunate to be in a home situation that yeah. is all right. I uh, I'm very happy to be to be this close to my family and not need to feel the need to leave. So I think the you know the the kick in the pants that's gonna do anything is gonna be internal. It's gonna be personal. It's gonna be a I should do this for myself and I should yeah. do it soon to now. But that soon to now is not now. Soon to now yeah. is sometime in the future. Is soon to now. <laughs> I, I I completely get where you're coming from when it comes to the the whole you owe it to yourself to put that challenge in front of you that's a great way of putting it because it's gonna happen you know what i mean life is going to i realized this with this past birthday i was was like oh holy shit life is starting to kick at my ass a little bit (laughs) and uh the only way to survive is to fight back Uh you know what i mean so i completely get what you mean about the whole at some point it comes time to say it's for me. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Kick, let's kick do it, it. Kick it into gear. Yeah. Yeah. And whether that be, uh, you said Oregon is, is a yeah, goal that's, for you. That, 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 that was a potential plan that I had like when I was still back in Boston, like this, this past fall, I was like, Oh, I wonder what if I could do that? They're, they're picking up their season again, post COVID. And I wonder, but I never put in enough legwork. I didn't go out there and talk to people. I didn't send enough emails to people. I was just, you know, spying on their website seeing when they would make announcements that could cater to me and they 
sort of did the, the 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 kicker that made this um that probably in the future thing was it was this summer they announced the season and the way they announced auditions were um local only if you weren't uh, union and I'm not union, so mm-hmm. I can't do those. Though the union based auditions, so the only auditions they uh, publicly announced were if you are within X amount of miles from this valley in Oregon. I'm like, I am not moving out there without the security of a job of some sort, right? So I'm not gonna hightail it and move to then say, Yeah, I live nearby. So I either need to get out to Oregon and wait for next year's season, hoping that I can because I now live there, or something else. And I've thought, I've thought about moving to Glendale. I've thought about moving to Eagle Rock if I wanted to stay local. Um, part of the, you know, temporary job thing is I'm, I work, I, I find working where, uh, at the coffee house right now really nice because it's like so close to me. Mm-hmm. If I move to Eagle Rock, I may need to either quit the job yeah. or seriously evaluate how often I can work, what hours I can work, etc. And I don't really want to do that right now. Yeah, I kind of, it's again choose your, choose your battles. I don't want to instigate a new workplace shift because I have to do this new home shift. Yeah, so you, you you and I are in a very similar situation, I think, because we. I mean, you know, you now know where I live, so uh-huh. you know I live pretty close, yep. relatively close to work. Um, not not as close as you live, but um, it's right now for me, especially with a lot of the payments that I've had to make, whether it be school or just other real life, whatever. Uh, taxes and shit we have to do now. oh my god no, yeah <laughs> you have to really conserve my yeah. money right now especially with these aspirations that you're talking about of moving out at some point yep. you know uh you know home is that cozy blanket yeah and it feels good it's the I, it's it's also just like you know i'm i i i learned how to drive very late in life this is a weird Mm-hmm. I guess side story. I learned how to drive, you know, like right after I graduated high school. So I did so much driving between high school and, you know, su- su- summer after high school, summer before college. And then I went away to college where I never drove because I didn't fuck driving in Boston. <laughs> so every time I came back home for the holidays, because that's what it was. When I would go to school, I would be school year is on the East Coast. Holidays and summer is the West Coast. So when I'm going back home, I get to like sink into go like you know the feeling of break the feeling of vacation being back home relaxing i get to you know i I get to drive around in the hometown that feels familiar to me out of the streets that are that are mine before i go before vacation ends and i go back east and then i have you know school mentality and now i'm graduated and school mentality is over there's no vacation it's just life (laughs) so i'm in this weird like i like I don't want to end vacation, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I gotta, I either gotta do something that breaks the familiar or learn to stay in the familiar, and both mm. have pros and cons. Yeah, man, you really summed it up. Heavy. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Uh, yeah, but I like, I like where we work right now. Oh yeah, you know, it's really nice and just small enough mm-hmm. you know that night that feeling of it's, being it's, small it's, enough it is, it is absolutely small enough it does not feel too <laughs> draining it does not feel too tiny which is a whole other thing that could have ended up happening i mean i'm I, i'm sure in another life i mean pro, abs, absolutely I mean, pe- people i've heard people congratulate her every now and then but like uh, kelly yeah massive props to, to staying open in pandemic and po- you know yeah. post post it all like i mean we're, we're not post it all but just any small business that has stay to float during all this is phenomenal. Yeah. So I feel very fortunate that this is an option. I love the environment that we have, but you know, all the other things we've said, there, there's so, there's so much going into it in terms of the life of it all and the perception of where we are. At yeah. This that's given true. Point. I mean, you, you saw during the whole pandemic, everyone's suffering, yeah. but the, the, I, I like, especially when I started working where we work, um, I are, like. Are we trying not to say the name? Is that part of it, or I, 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 I noticed no, that. Okay, I, I said, said, okay, dude, I said it episode one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gave away. Is, my, and this is sixteen. Okay, okay. You know, I, you know what? I, the I, next episode, I'm actually going to give away my my social security. Let's go. Card, oh, my, drop my the driver's drop license, the digits. My my address. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay. We're gonna have a PO box next episode. <laughs> Don't worry, dude. All right. Um, no, but uh, <laughs> sorry. You 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 said the the name of the boss, dude. <laughs> first name 
Yeah. I, see, that's the thing. I, I, sorry, again, I didn't, I didn't want to do this tangent, but I wanted to ask. Like, I, because it seemed like every now and then we were like dodging around saying that, and I was like, but I, like at a certain point, dodging around quiet, saying, quiet. The, the, the woman who, who employs us and manages the store where, and we, like, it's, the, 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 lev- the level of vague at a certain point to d- avoid the, the, the concrete becomes too much. And Dude, I, just, it'd be funny if I like actually edited out parts where we say coffee barista just, just bleep it just censor yeah. it <laughs> it's like the first kill bill where they whenever they had the I name see, of the the I protagonist still, I still need to see that oh my oh, god there's, there's there's Fuck, there's never honestly mind. We, we we need to talk classic movies at some point because I de- there's so many things even even going to liberal arts slash film school yeah. there's so many things I don't have under my belt that I need to see oh, film wise but okay but I, cut, I cut you off sorry no it's okay here's the thing um, when it comes to the uh, the, uh, the the pandemic people places shutting down and everything when I started working at uh, our work. Uh, it was closer to when the pandemic was being relieved, I guess, from people's minds. Okay. And so like after the vaccines started yes, rolling yes. out. Okay. Just okay. around that time. And people kept on coming in. They kept, there was almost uh, a unity in what they were saying of like, I'm so glad you guys are here. You know what I mean? Okay. So glad you guys survived and all that. And that, and that's nice to hear, especially yeah. when it, when you see all the places that shut down, mm-hmm. it's messed up. It's fucked up. To put it as bluntly as that. No, yeah. I mean, the, the small business was having a rough time. And, you know, from the consumer side of it, I you know, there was like a restaurant that I really liked uh, in uh, some, some somewhere out east. And I was like, oh, man, they shut down. That's a bummer. I didn't get a burrito before I graduated. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, poor me. But, right. like, the, the, the consequences, the, the thought process of, of these business owners is to be like, we have to stop. We can't support anything right now. Yeah. It's just heartbreaking, and you know I feel so bad that 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 uh, that a huge number of companies and businesses and like you know small town staples had to go away. So the fact that there are some that are still afloat, does you know, and despite change chains also reigning over, the fact that there are small businesses still out there to this degree, and the people who are there to support them is you know. Not, a, not I'm not I'm not very religious but the word miracle does come to mind. Yeah. It's really impressive. Also impressive. I mean it's 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 not it, actually I don't I don't want to say miracle because that feels like it's not in the hands of the people who control it. I mean, right. like, there's a lot right. of work that has to be done in order to stay afloat. A during, lot of suffering during, that has yeah. to be done, you know. You have to you have to do some fighting. Yeah. You know, you have to fight to survive and it's it's insane because you know what you brought up about uh, the consumer side of that whole this place shutting down and everything. A lot of people look at uh, businesses in general as conveniences, right? What's most convenient? You know, I could do Grubhub for like, say, Panda Express uh, because it's quicker and more in my face and all that. And, and I marketed it. It's like, it's it's a game of like, what do I recognize more? Mm-hmm. Panda Express or the, uh, the local Chinese pro- <laughs> or like in Highland Park, okay Chinese food. <laughs> Have you seen that? <laughs> I, don't, I I've been to Highland Park before. I definitely have. I must I must have crossed it before, but I, I can't. Place it's it. literally called OK Chinese food, <laughs> but they are still here. Let's go. They've been here for like as long as I can remember. Fought through the pandemic and everything. Yeah. It's insane, but people look at it as conveniences. And for the, for the people who were loyal enough to keep uh, mom and pops, keep them afloat. Or afloat. Uh, that is, I will say that is a miracle because yeah. you have to, influencing a crowd of people has got to be one of the biggest challenges yeah. in history, in, in our world's history. Influencing people and how they think and what they do. And when it comes to a positive, that is, for me, a miracle. Yeah. God damn it. What happened? Oh, no, no. I just, oh, <laughs> so you said, I'm just, damn it, as you turn and touch that, I, know, that, I was right? like, does, does something happen? I'm emphasizing. I still see the point. red light. I still see the red light. God damn it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, we talked a little bit about coffee. We talked about Doctor Who a little yeah. bit. We talked about workers' rights and the fact that we're still standing, as Elton John would put it. Uh, do you have yeah, any? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you have any uh, horror stories regarding uh, your time at, at, at the coffee house? Oh man, the I, I I've been asked this before. I really nothing nothing too terrible. I uh I have two that come to mind right away. One of them was when one of them happened to me, the other one didn't. One of them was when I was working at the Starbucks, Starbucks, not the one oh, in, not right. the one in the uh store. Um 
it was and it was it's it was so tame it was just this woman who tried to give me a hundred and i was like I, I, I it wasn't it wasn't like i can't do anything right now i was like actually actually told don't do anything don't take any bills as big and she just threw a hissy fit and i was like i, I was like I, I don't know what to tell you can someone help me it was, it was it, like in the moment it was probably a lot more scarier than i'm letting it on to believe right now but you know it was just she was she was throwing a tantrum and I didn't know how to respond to the tantrum. So yeah. someone had, you know, one of my coworkers who had been there longer and knew how to deal with people and had a more authoritarian face than I did. was like, <laughs> look, we can't do, can't do that. Either leave or don't. And she was like, fine. And she left. And I was like, well, that was a rough four minutes of my life, but now it's over. <laughs> um, and the other one. So, I mean, so that, that, that's my horror story from the Starbucks. It was like, it was really not a bad place at all. Right. The other one didn't happen to me and I wasn't even there for it. I just heard out about, heard about it after I was going downstairs to grab stuff and I came back up and my, the, my, my boss and other coworkers who I was with at the time, this, this was the Starbucks in the star market. Um, this guy who in the, in the past there was claims from our coworkers that he had come in and stolen our tips. He didn't on this occasion, but he you know, he called my manager the N word and he was like hate criming him and he started hitting oh my God. started hitting him with this like walking stick and this is all I was in the hit, basement. Hitting him? Yeah, he was like he did this and the boss like grabbed it. Oh, I, like, I, I, again, oh I don't I don't God. have the full I story because I on. wasn't there. I have a walking stick right over here. Oh my God. <laughs> Like I, I heard, I heard this after the fact, and I was like, "Oh my god, this was in like the span of one trip downstairs." You heard this in the background. (laughs) (laughs) I just, I mean, it was. I I could. I mean, there's nothing I could do. I came up after the fact, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And I, 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 I wasn't talking to my boss, boss, the guy who was. Uh, you know, uh, uh, like <laughs> wrong, wrong, yeah, who was you know wrongly insulted and ch- chastised by this? I th- I think I had heard that it was a homeless man or something. I don't know. I don't want to assume what their situation was. I don't want. I mean, he if if he had been stealing tips, you know that sucks. But oh well. Yeah. But like I heard all of this from one of my you know, equivalently leveled coworkers who was like, oh, I was like, oh, where'd John go? He was like, she was like, oh, he walked back. There was a guy <laughs> who was yelling curse words at him and hitting him with a stick. And I was like, oh, what? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to head out in about, in about five. I think you're good. Right? I was like, yeah, I'm good. So I mean, like, I, I mean, from that point on, I was just alone for the rest of the day. I was like, what's, what's going to happen? Like, <laughs> Oh man, and that was also a really close place to me. So I was like, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't hope I don't, I don't see this guy with the who matched the description of you know whatever else he was holding besides a walking stick. Sure, so yeah. I was just a little on edge the rest of that day. Obviously, not the person to be targeted in that situation. I felt bad for my boss and how he had to go through that. But I mean, that's probably the most other horror story I have. <laughs> you know, I recently went to uh, Las Vegas. Nice. And um, it, one of the regrets I have of going there is oh. not going to a coffee place because imagine the shit you would see yeah. there with the, <laughs> the I, I want to see like defunct Spongebob going in asking for a latte also you know trying to sell pictures and shit uh-huh. in the middle of the uh, of the uh, lobby I guess it were uh, is it, do coffee houses have lobbies? Uh, <laughs> what yeah. is that? Waiting area? It's a, it, yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I mean, coffee shops wouldn't be closed, wouldn't be open at night so much, so we probably don't get a lot of you know Vegas nightlife. But I can imagine all the walk of shame people and all. Well, people the... are drunk there, twenty four seven. Oh, okay. Well, then, yeah, morning probably is also <laughs> morning probably is not any different of a situation. The city, city of sin. So I... wait, you didn't get coffee at all while you were in, or you just didn't? Well, go... I got coffee. I just didn't go to like a coffee, a coff- shop, a coffee, you know, shop. Okay. like a Starbucks or something. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I mean, the, the, even the Starbucks have liquor. Have, have liquor? Liquor. They like serve liquor? Alcohol. They serve alcohol? No. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you got to say all. You have to be very careful with how you say shots around Vegas coffee shops. That is crazy. I did not know that. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, people are drinking all over that place. You know? I should go to Vegas at some point. That sounds <laughs> like a weird place to be. Have that, you I ever mean, been? I have not. Well, actually, that's a lie. I went when I was like a toddler. My oh, parents, I see. My parents brought me for a thing. I'm, I've always been. It's one of those things where I've been like, oh, Dad, have I ever been, Dad, have I ever been to Vegas? And he's like, oh, yeah, we brought you when you couldn't walk. And I was like, okay, well, that doesn't count. But thank you for letting me know that technically I have been in the city, in the state of Nevada. <laughs> you know, I don't recall seeing too many children. 
during my visit. I would not be surprised. I, yeah. I mean, God, the, I mean, just the amount of smoke. The smoke, I, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. People, people are, like, still smoking, like, all mm-hmm. over. I mean, not that people aren't smoking in the cities nowadays, especially with new laws and whatnot, but, I mean, like, the cigarette smoke in downtown Las Vegas, I just heard, is the worst. It, it is pretty bad. I, it, it, because you also got to face that shit in the casinos. Yep. There are casinos that Indo- allow... Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah. I, no, I, I was I, walking uh, through a casino to meet my homie, and uh, I was walking behind this guy, and I couldn't tell that he was smoking for uh, like a good five seconds and then he's just he lets it out he puffs it out and it i walk right into it and it's literally that cartoon where it's like you know you you breathe out the smoke and the the, face like scrunches and tightens yeah and but you also see in the cloud you see like the skull and crossbones and shit (laughs) that's literally what it was like it was bad (laughs) it was not good man no that it's it is you'll never find a more pure hive of scum and villainy than in Las Vegas. And I guess you're right. That's not, it's not an environment. I mean, like, I mean, like you see kids running all over New York. I mean, like yeah. they've lived there all their lives and they know the streets and blah, blah, blah. But I think, yeah, the, the, the sense that Las Vegas is different and there's not going to be children roaming around. That makes a lot of sense now that you say it. I should, I, I kind of want to, I kind of want to go to Las Vegas now and just see it for myself, but I don't, I don't know what I'm going to get out there. I, you know, you'll get trouble. And uh, tr- alcohol. Trouble. Trouble, yeah. I, I had to deal with some trouble over in Vegas. Oh, no. I don't know if I want to tell this story. All I know is... Save that for, uh, for, the, for the 20th special, 20th episode special. You know, well, you know I, I'm actually going to have uh, Brian and Sebastian on that one. Very nice. Because I have them on, I guess, on every 10th. Because ah. I had them on 10, and now I on the 20th uh, chapter, they you, ha- you have it confirmed. They will be there. And maybe I'll tell them what happened uh, at my Vegas trip. I just, oh, wait. They weren't part of the Vegas trip? No. Oh, no. okay. It was myself, my friend Andrew, Jacob, and uh, Lynn. We went. Uh, I did call Brian when this story happened and uh, to tell him. But then I realized he's he's not the person to tell because he will tell everyone else. Copy I'm sorry, Brian. If you're listening, Brian, uh, you know Harrison. Uh, you, you know me. Harrison can vouch. You are you are a butterfingers with knowledge. You slip it out all the time. Harrison, you want to <laughs> second? Come on. Oh man. Uh <laughs> God, what was the gossip in God junior in junior senior year of exactly. of high school? What was the hot gossip? Then? I can't even recall. Uh, <laughs> yeah, now, now let's get into the yo mama joke uh, yo section mama of jo- the podcast. Oh, are you ready? Got? Yeah, what we got? Go okay. Um there's I, ju- a- I just texted my mom as it were. She asked, what if she, the could, she asked if she could finish the Chipotle chips. And I said, yeah. I, I mean, there's no more guac. You destiny. Can't. Destin? Destiny. Destiny. Fate. <laughs> All right. What's the, what is the Yo Mama section of the of the episode? Where we just talk about your mama. Let's go. Okay. Right. Like, quite literally, Destiny. Okay. I thought, I thought it was just going to be a joke section or something. Okay. Quite literally. So, right, what, do you want, what do you want to know about my mom? <laughs> no. I'm, it literally was a Yo Mama joke section. <laughs> wait. Actually? No. Wait. No. <laughs> Okay, yeah, now, now you know what? Now let's move on. Now no, it's no, not, it, it's no, not good. You got to hit me with at least one of them. I'm so, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to curtail things. All, the only Yamama jokes I have in mind are from the Far Side song about Yamama jokes, uh, such as um, Yamama's got a f- glass eye with a fish fish in it. I like that one. That's dad humor. Uh, she, your mama has to. That's not. Eat. That's not even a mama joke. That's just good character design. That's kind of <laughs> nutty. Your mama has to eat arrows to get her shit straight. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, I, I don't remember many other ones. But the, the far side came up with some pretty good ones. Okay. Do you, Do you have any in your pocket? Oh man. Did you ever do your mama jokes? I mean, I remember the the, the big buff animated guy on YouTube with the Yo Mama channel or whatever. What? God. God. They, they, God. <laughs> You know, you know that you know that really like typical, uh, you know, like Newgrounds animation. To, it's very flat, um, very, uh, like f- like bold outlined. Um, did you ever watch like, God, Animeme or Animeme. Uh, uh, re- uh, uh, Red Something Five? The guy, the Red 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 Minus. Red mi- no. D- no. Just like you know. Are there, two, there two, animation channels? Yeah, like two, like 2012 to actually probably like 2009, depending on how early they started, to like 2013 YouTube era animation channels. One of them was um, this guy who would make his voice sound like the um, uh, 
God, what's his name? The guy, the guy who played Mr. Barkin in Kim Possible. Oh no, no, no! Better, better. The guy who played uh, Joe Swanson in, oh, in Family um, Guy. Yes. Uh, Whatever that actor's name who has that Patrick really Warburton. Icon- yes. Patrick Warburton. It was this guy <laughs> who can make his voice sound like Patrick Warburton, and he had this character who was this big, blo- big buff, you know, blonde, curly hair, oh, macho. The, ma- yeah. It sounds like um, the Venture Brothers. No, 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 not quite. Not With quite. Uh, what Brock Sampson. Because that's a character Patrick Warburton played, who sound, who looks just like that. Patrick, okay, now I need to Google it. Hey, hey Peter. What, what, yeah, hey, Peter. Hey. What was what was his, what was the <laughs> Patrick Venture Brothers? War, uh, the Venture Brothers, yeah. Because Patrick Warburton was on that show. Venture Brothers. Was hilarious. And show. what was the other? No, oh no, I see. No, I didn't know. Uh, no, well, God, what was his name? I now now I need to find and show you the guy. <laughs> Damn it, Yo, Mama Guy. Google. <laughs> Yo, Mama Guy. Li- uh, this guy. What do you mean? This guy. Oh wait, yes, Matt. What? What's it? What's his name? Uh, Brody Fox. Brody Fox. Mm, okay. Uh, no. Brock, I, I Brock re- Baker was the uh, YouTube guy who could make his voice sound like the Patrick Warburton. Oh, okay. So That's good. Cool. He had a series of ver- various channels. One of them was Animeme, or he was involved in Animeme, and he had other YouTube animation things. One of them was the Yo Mama channel. <laughs> where he would do various jokes, various Yo Mama jokes in his Patrick Warburton voice as that character. Um, he also yelled Xbox Live and everyone thought oh it was hilarious. Um, big tangent there. That <laughs> technically does technically does still count as a Yo Mama section. It is, it is part of the Yo Mama section of the show. <laughs> you know, I think that should actually be a new segment on this podcast. Uh-huh. The Yo Mama section. Yo Mama section. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully other guests don't (laughs) completely redirect it halfway through. Yeah, literally. Uh, The next person I have on, uh, I will have... I'll say ahead of recording, you have to have a couple of your mama jokes ready. (laughs) Alrighty. We'll see what happens. That's ridiculous. I I like Patrick Warburton. I like his Oh, yeah. I mean, I I, I mentioned Joe Swanson because I know that's where people mostly know him. My first thing with him was Mr. Barkin from Mm -hmm. Kim Possible. Mm -hmm. He was the... You know, vague teacher slash principal character that they did because they didn't want to animate any other adults in the in the school setting. But he, that that's my uh, character go to for yeah. that actor. And I know he's done a bunch of other voice and non voice work. But oh I, yeah, he's been working. Forever. Oh my god, he's been working forever. For a lot of people, for for a time in the '90s, he was people's choice to play uh, Shazam. Or I guess oh, then Captain Marvel because he's got be that fun. look, you know. I know he was just the tick, or not just. He was he was the tick, he was the tick in the in that reboot, and that was. Didn't they? I thought I saw somewhere like a few weeks ago that they were like they the original design when Amazon was going to reboot that was going to be like the original costume, but they were but when they cast him, they were like, no, 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 you have to edit it. He has to have his full face in view mm-hmm. because we can't miss his expressions. Yeah, and that's I mean that's that's. That's some clout right there. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> they changed the design of the tick for me. That, I mean, that's the, to be able to say shit like that about a character you play. That's also, I mean, like that's the dream, dream to have mm. something catered for you based on your performance. Like that is like you know big dream goal. I think in mind that I have. Oh yeah. Well, another great example. I don't know if you ever watched Dread. Did you watch that? I've seen the movie with Carl Urban. Yes, yeah. I've seen the movie with Carl Urban, and I think that is it. I watched it uh, with my college roommate because he was really excited for the uh, for the Judge Dredd uh, Call of Duty bundle. Oh, so. okay. Well, so you know he's got the the face mask yeah, with, like, on the, the whole X, time, right? and, but yeah, the yeah, X yeah. he hid his face. He intentionally did that, Carl Urban. That's where I think it's really cool. Where you like, yeah, you, know, you know, an actor wants to put their face out there, whereas he was just like, he was this, like I'm keeping it on the yeah. And didn't they, they did another one with. Uh, was Stallone. 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 The, okay. the, and he took it off. He took it off right away. Almost right? immediately. Yeah. yeah. See, <laughs> that's but, why Carl Urban's cool. Yeah. I mean, there, that, that's the other thing, though. Like, you know, attention to detail from the source material. All, all the, the most recent news I'm thinking about is the there was recently the uh, recasting of Guy from The Witcher. They took. Oh uh, yeah, Henry Cavill. They took Henry Cavill off, and because well, part, partly because of Superman, I'm sure, mm-hmm. which that's a whole other thing. Yeah. Um. They took Henry Cavill off and they replaced him with Liam Hemsworth. Liam Hemsworth. And people are pissed. And, you know, I'm, I don't watch The Witcher. I probably will. I know that the fight choreography is supposed to be amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, I people people were – I, I saw pe- Henry Cavill saying and people saying about Henry Cavill, like, he wanted to do g- stuff that was more guided by the books because he loved The Witcher books. And the creative team wanted to do new things. So there's that other idea of, like, what – 
who who are we making this for? Right. Who who what what is the audience we want to get? Do we want new audience or do we want old audience? What is the creative set point behind this? And I'm sure the the whatever's left of the DC money that they're throwing yeah. at Henry Cavill is nice, <laughs> but I'm sure there were also just like creative things going on if he wanted to do things one way and they were saying, eh, let's not. Yeah. A good balance of what you're talking about, I think, is when it comes to adaptation versus uh, doing something new is uh, with the uh, the Nolan Batman films. Oh, yeah. You know, where they took a lot of the source material and just they pleased fans with that, mm-hmm. those elements, but brought it into a more real context and those and were things up they the, the his goal for like all of those was to feel like a lot more grounded yeah and like the these things could happen i remember the the big one for that i because I, I didn't watch those on release i watched the, them for the first time with uh like my two really good friends from high school who we always used to move the marathon with um and you watch the batmans and i didn't know i guess spoilers i didn't know that two-face dies oh yeah and i was like why are they why oh, wait, i thought we we're gonna break it back and my friend was just like he face is gone and this is trying to be some amount of real he has to die either by infection or something else i was like no you know i get i guess that makes sense for the Mm -hmm. real version of these characters yeah two face can't be around very long after happening yeah uh, another example i think in that trilogy that is really interesting is their utilization of uh robin in there oh with uh, that joseph gun yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know i i i like what they did with those movies a lot mm-hmm. you know i think they're i think the dark knight rises it's not better than the dark knight but i do think it's underrated like it gets a lot of unnecessary hate i like i like um tom hardy i've, I've, I've always loved tom hardy mm-hmm. um I, th- I think i do need to rewatch that one i've seen dark knight like a solid two times i've seen batman begins i think once I, I like Batman. I like I like Ninja Batman. I like I like I like, I like when they lean into that trope. I think it's fun. Um, but I, I I should probably give Rises another watch. I should. I mean, I should. I, there's so many things I need to watch. I need to see again. Did you see the see. new Batman? Oh, the Robert Pattinson. Yeah. yeah, I saw I saw that in theaters. It was so long. It was all right. It was it was cool. Long. I watched it the other night with uh, my friend Justin. Oh, for Halloween? Uh, not oh. for Halloween. That would have been a good watch for Halloween, yeah. actually. Um, but for uh, his birthday. It's, okay. uh, it's on the 3rd of November. So it's in that... You know, it's funny. It's it's within that week. Yeah. You know, so that's funny. Um, but uh, we watched it, and uh, it is very long. It's very long. But I, I don't know if I would put it above something like The Dark Knight because I think the yeah. Dark Knight is just a whole other level of I, film. I, I like him as Batman a lot. I just think that that story was a little... I, I, I don't like Catwoman. I, I, just I, in general? I, I don't find the Selina Kyle character very interesting, especially right then. I'm not a big Batman guy, but I, in general, I just think that early on Catwoman is very boring. Mm-hmm. And either you know boring because it's been done before i can't i don't think i've seen batman year one i think i need to oh the I, animated film? Yeah, yeah yeah i watched like after after i watched Batinson, i watched like a bunch of stuff because i hadn't really seen anything so i like got an hbo max i saw all the anim- uh, not all the animated things but most of the animated things um did you watch the series the animated series no no no, no. that's that's too much for me i didn't watch i haven't watched <laughs> that or superman or real or young justice or any of those i like i like dc in small increments mm-hmm. uh the only god I watched The Flash season one, and then I stopped because I didn't give a shit about The Flash anymore. <laughs> and my favorite, my favorite DC show, my favorite, um, and my my Superman hundred percent is Superman and Lois. Oh, Tyler Hoechlin, hundred percent. He's really good. I love that guy. He's I love really that good. show. It is, it is, it is absolutely a CW feeling show, <laughs> but it is just phenomenal. I, I eat that shit up. He he reminds me a lot of. Uh, Chris Evans is Captain America, you okay. know, in terms of his yeah, presence. Yeah, no, I can, I can absolutely you know? see that. Yeah, and I, I like him a lot. You know, he got, I, I wish they would kind of change up his hair a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. But, I mean, that's a nitpick thing because mm. I love Superman and all that. But, um, so you mentioned, or I guess we talked a little bit about Henry Cavill and he's yeah. coming back as Superman. Are you, like, are you whatever you about know, that? It, it was, I mean... In reality, it was what they had to do to make the Black Adam thing interesting. Mm-hmm. I thought I thought Black Adam was also fine. It yeah. was probably you know, probably probably one of the top five DC movies. But that's not saying anything because these all <laughs> the all these DCEU movies are like really bad. Um, I think you know, 
I I think getting him back is fine. I think Henry Cavill's a fine Superman. I think I didn't like Justice Leagues at all. Either of them, they were both slogs. Oh, the, uh, Sni- the Snyder cut Snyder or cut. the I've only <laughs> seen the Snyder cut. Oh, okay. You didn't see? I didn't see be- Justice. Lee. I didn't oh, care. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um, I yeah. God, I it's it, it. They're just not good. It's right. like Suicide. The Suicide Squad is the best one, mm-hmm. and then like. Shazam, Black Adam, Aquaman are all like tied for second for me. They're mm-hmm. all like fine, and I feel it's because they're saying like I they they just rush to a group thing so soon. They did. And the other thing is, with Henry Cavill coming back, I think that's fine. Enough people like him. He's a fine Superman. I prefer Tyler Hoechlin. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just I don't like Ben Affleck, and he doesn't. Ben Affleck <laughs> doesn't like Ben Affleck as Batman. So you know the conversation, and I mean. To talk broader, all of this, let's get this actor back to do X, Y, and Z because relevance, because reference, because any, like, it's, you know, it's fine. Mm-hmm. You don't have to, though. I haven't, I, I saw this thing on Twitter, like, a day or two ago. Uh, I have not watched Andor. I still need to watch Andor. Oh, I'll yeah. get to it eventually. But apparently the character of Admiral Yularen, who was, like, the narrator of the Clone Wars series, like, he was that voice. Yeah. Who was also in, like, Powerpuff Girls or whatever. They recast that guy as just some old guy with white hair, which, like, yeah, you don't need to, you don't need to have all of these legacy actors play these legacy roles, which isn't to say you shouldn't. There was the, there was the Bayonetta voice actor drama all that while ago, and that's a whole other bag of worms. But, you know, the idea of, let's back... Let's get X, Y, or Z back for the attention of getting them back is not as crucial, is not as, you know, it's, it, it feels like a show when it should be, are we, do we want to move forward with this? And what do we, I mean, there was a talk about Michael B. Jordan, Superman, yeah. which would have been fun. I don't know a lot about that Superman character as much as Kal-El, but that would have been great to see on movies now. I mean, like, absolutely should be doing more of that, like, representation-wise and just, like, changing up the narrative in some way. But when they did the Shazam end credit scene, we saw headless white <laughs> Superman. I mean, they sort of are putting they're, – they're, they're setting up a path that they have to commit to something. And Warner Brothers is in shambles right now, so they had to grab someone's attention. Mm-hmm. And the DCEU Henry Cavill supporter fans absolutely are enough of a, uh, are a loud enough group. Yeah, well, with with those characters, the, 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 the just the DC characters in general. Well, with the the specifically these takes on Batman and Superman, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Affleck and Cavill, uh-huh. I've always looked at them with one word in mind, what which is, is potential. You know, I've always looked at them with potential because I do see why you would cast someone like Affleck as as Batman when okay. it comes to Bruce Wayne. If you want a Bruce Wayne of the Kevin uh, Conroy, er- Elk. Okay, no, no, no. I, could, see, I see what you're, you're saying. I see what you're saying. I don't like that his Batman was killed. What's weird about Vegas is I was there and they were on the TV. They were just showing a bunch of DC shit. So <laughs> I was, I watched, rewatched Batman vs Superman, and I, I, yeah, but I like a lot of what's going on with his Batman. I just don't like that he fucking kills. I don't like that Superman is an emotionless, uh, just plot point you know i i want him to have personality that's, and, what, that's why i didn't like the justice league story because superman wasn't a character he was a plot point right it was it was so just gross i don't know if there's one thing i did like I, well i actually didn't like the snyder cut but one thing i appreciated when it came to the superman um a scene that actually brought me to the point of tears that was in the snyder but Th- not that in was the... in the snyder cut okay. was when he came back and he was on the farm and he and he met with his uh, mom again okay. you know that actually did touch me and i was like okay you guys can get it you can on you do on some level understand what has been missing from this version of superman but I- i'm encouraged when i hear cavill saying I want to take him in more of a, a, a lighter, more hopeful direction. Oh, he they, they, he has said that about the character? He, he said that. Ha, has Warner Brothers said that that is the direction that they're going? I don't because know what's going on with Warner, Warner Brothers. Bro- Warner Brothers has said, yes, we got our actor back. Let's go. He's committed. And I mean, li- literally his last project had created differences over a character that he was mm-hmm. passionate about doing a certain thing with. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I think Henry Cavill is a fine Superman. I don't think Ben Affleck is a good Batman. The, the, the whole, the whole does Batman. Is it the, kill, does ba- is it the it's killing? It's not. It's okay. not. I, I think he's, I think he's a fine, you know, billionaire, suave, charming guy. I don't think he's a good Batman. His mm-hmm. Batman, his Batman voice, his Batman demeanor. It's just, it's just weird. And again, I, I've seen, I've seen some Batman movies back when that one, back when the Battinson one came out and I had my little mini marathon of whatever, what the hell was on HBO max at the time. 
Um, but at, even as someone who doesn't like love, love, love the Batman character, I just feel like Hen- like Henry, like uh, Ben Affleck is just a weird pick. Mm-hmm. It's the there's there's so many things about it that are really odd about it, and I could probably speak to it a little bit more. A, if I've seen those movies more recently. Mm-hmm. B, if I understood and was passionate about the like, I, I I'm sure that, I'm sure there. I mean, there, I know there are. There are a bunch of people who love Batfleck. Oh yeah, yeah. It's just not for me. And I get I, that. And I, and I feel and I feel like because of that, DCEU has sort of been doomed from around that area. And all mm-hmm. of the, all of my favorite things have been the ones that are removed the the Suicide Squad yeah. and and um, uh, Aquaman, which took place before Justice League, but came out after. Like all of the things that sort of remove them from like what everyone knows about DC. I guess people know Aquaman. Mm-hmm. People don't know Black Adam and Shazam as much as they do now. Yeah, but. I just like when they take a step back and they do newer things because the current, the current, the, the, the main focus things are not as appealing to me. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm excited from what you're saying uh, about the, the more isolated stuff, I guess yep. is the, uh, what's it called? The blue beetle. Oh, I'm so excited for yeah, blue beetle. Yeah. Yeah. That one is going to be cool. I, I, I knew about that character, but I didn't know. I mean, like I, I knew he existed. I didn't know anything about it, but I like just recently, <laughs> This is gonna in the year 2020. I played Injustice <laughs> Two for the first time. Oh, okay. I love that guy. He's <laughs> snarky. He's fun. Uh, I think the CGI is either gonna be hit or miss. I think I mean, it's it's particles that come out of nothing and blah blah blah, which is what all CGI looks like nowadays. It's gross. Um, but I think it's I think it's gonna be real fun. I. I think he's gonna be. I think he's gonna be really fun. It's, he's a snarky <laughs> guy with an alien on his back who talks to him like. Yeah. I love when they do. I I love how they have been bringing in things that aren't more familiar and making them like you know core to the universe. But the core of the universe, I don't think they're doing right. <laughs> at all. Did you see Peacemaker? I did. I love Peacemaker. It was really good. Love Peacemaker. Yeah. Well, James Gunn is the head. He, yes. He's the CEO now I did of hear DC that. Studios. So I, know, that gives me some hope. That's, absolutely. We'll, yeah. we'll, we will see what happens. James Gunn. But it is still a Warner Brothers company, and Warner Brothers I am not trusting right now. So Yeah, and that's fair, man. That's fair. One thing I don't trust uh, and am worried by, it's not, it has, has nothing to do with uh, DC <laughs> or Warner Brothers. It does have to do with, and I'm curious – because we don't really talk much about politics but uh, or many social things aside from the worker stuff um elon musk boy oh brother okay (laughs) is is there a question or you just want me to ramble (laughs) well uh i was hearing a little bit about today at work i was listening to a little bit about uh elon musk's recent acquisition of twitter yep and uh, the mass layoffs. I read uh-huh. uh, they released someone did uh, an article on Yahoo about the email that people the blunt email saying you're fired. You know, it, it's I, I I'm not excited by this. I know there are a lot of people who champion Elon Musk uh, because of how he puts himself out there. You know, he, put, he I think he's trying to put himself out there as a new, like a Tony Stark. You know what I mean? Yeah. A real life Tony Stark. I mean, he was, that's he, not for me the case. Oh no. Dear God. Elon, Elon Musk is a dipshit. hundred <laughs> percent certified dipshit. Um, but yeah, no people, people, but because of that perception of him, that Tony Stark perception of him, people absolutely rally behind him. And there is enough, there is a loud enough voice on his side that allows him to keep doing these things. The same is true with all of, all of all of the idiots and dipshits, the mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, you know the Trumps and Kanye right now, but Kanye oh, kind of always Kanye's always been weird. He's been like right that for now, the last he's decade. Just insane. He's been he, like that for the last decade. Yeah, yeah. Um, Elon Musk, I remember like literally, li- literally, my high school, which was an art high school, um, we had an audition that we could like all 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 of the boys one day. Like all of the all of the male theater kids were like told, "You're not going to class today. You're coming over here and doing this audition." And they were very vague, but it was Spider Man. They were having us audition for Ned. In, oh wow! In the MCU. Wow. Um, and no one person at the school got it, and another person who goes to the school got it 
got got it got further in the audition process than any of us. Okay, yeah, it wasn't yeah. the the no, guy who no, plays no, Ned. The guy who okay. plays Ned right now does not go did not go to my high school. Okay, but in that day of auditions, <laughs> right. one person got called to come further, and someone else who goes to the school got called to go further by auditioning separately than that school event. But in the script that we were given. It was Ned saying like, oh my God, you got the Elon Musk internship? And when oh. I saw Spider-Man Homecoming, I mean, I, I we, we, we connected the dots earlier, but like that scene, obviously edited, was still kind of there. They were talking about the Stark internship. So, right. and honest to God, this was like sophomore year high school. I don't know who the fuck Elon Musk was. I thought it was a made up name right. that they inserted to save the, you know integrity of the script to right. not reveal that to reveal that it wasn't a, a marvel thing so i was like oh man the elon musk this is a hilarious stupid name and then someone's <laughs> like no that's the real dude i was like oh so so you so the they used elon musk as the equivalent yes, of as Tony the Stark equivalent of in, the Stark auditioning Stark in the audition text wow yeah wow that's that's pretty cool well elon musk had a cameo in one of the iron yeah man no, films. he was in he was in iron man too he yeah. was in the race i used i used to love the iron man movies i mean i still do they were like my initial thing because of how early they early on they were I've since, you know, I like I like other things now. I I think that character is a little here and there. Yeah. Actually, maybe the meta, maybe the metaphor is not great because there are things about Tony Stark. I don't know. I, I'm going in, I'm going in a weird direction right now. <laughs> he's a complicated um, guy. He's a complicated to guy. To say the least. Elon Musk is less so. Elon Musk is just a dork. Well, I think John Stewart said it the best uh, regarding this acquisition of Twitter with Elon Musk. It's not Where, heroism. It's it's narcissism. Oh, hundred you know? percent. When when did John Stewart say this? He when, said it. He has a podcast. Uh, John Stewart. He has okay, a podcast. I, I did not know that. You, you know he has a show. Uh wait, what's th- I know he was the he w- problem or something. It's called something. Oh, the problem oh, oh, with John oh, oh, Stewart, oh, yeah, I think yeah. it's called. But he also has a podcast. It's it's not on Comedy Central though, right? No, it's, it's a, on it's a, uh, Apple, okay. Apple, oh. Apple TV. But I watch this get, stuff on YouTube. Get that money, John Stewart. Yeah, I used to. I mean, my dad used to watch The Daily Show, and I I love that shit whenever I came in for it. But it was also, I mean. <laughs> When the Daily Show was happening, I was a kid, so I was like, I don't want to watch news. But Dad's watching the Daily Show, so I'll sit for that because <laughs> Daily Show, Daily Show is funny. It is funny, <laughs> and, and you know, I like John Stewart. I I respect John Stewart. I love John Stewart a lot. Right, he's now. such a great personality. Oh my like, god, really, it, he he is smart. He is like on top of things politically. He is like he sh- he should be getting all the shit that Elon is, but yeah. He, and he's he's, I mean, you saw what he did for the first responders of nine eleven. Uh, when he went to Congress, he did you ever hear about this? Well, I didn't know. Well, John Stewart, he was uh, someone who spoke on behalf of first responders of nine eleven who were who have been waiting because you know the first responders they got all sorts of like diseases and breathing problems because they were of all the rubble that happened yeah. when the towers fell and they were promised all the, this relief and, you know, relief funds and everything. And they never got it. So he went up to, I think he went up to Congress, uh, John Stewart. And he, it, this was last year. I think he had a whole, uh, speech. He was condemning members who, because the Congress or I'm, I'm not sure if it's Senate or Congress or whatever, but he talked to these people of power, these people of means who could have, given these heroes what they needed and he was condemning them and it, it was great it was a great public hear service any of this this was this was last year that john Stewart i believe it was last year yeah what whatever i think it was a Senate, whatever legislative or, or body it, it may be yeah. about the 911 responders not that's decade, i'm gonna that's a I'm gonna, decade later oh I'm my god Dec- and then some it was it was remarkable. So I, John Stewart has my go, respect. Go, go John Stewart. But yeah, he br- he was talking about like he talks about all politics. He was talking about Elon Musk and everything. Uh-huh. And um, yeah, I don't. Why do you think that people like Musk are deified? Is it because of their come up? Is it because of what they have? Like, what what do you think? About I think that? it's because of how they present themselves. I mean, he 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 his come up was not one to revere. Right. We know that now. Fact. You know, People fact check and call him out for it all the time, but he is still, you know, presenting himself as this self-made man. Um, he is presenting himself as I will be giving us bet more better space research, and he tries and he tries to support and like NASA works with SpaceX now to some degree, but I mean, he as a person and his companies as companies are not actually like doing the good the good things that they say they are within i mean within reason they're te- te- tesla is not in a great in a great position yay electric cars mm-hmm. 
boo self-driving, like the new shiny technology and like how things are being presented to them, you know, Mars Hotel by 2028, like that's not going to happen. But people who, you know, want those things or want to or think they want those things or like those things, they're going to fall behind the person who is saying, I'm going to give it to you. Yeah. And, yeah. That, and that's sort of Musk's thing. He, he keeps saying, I'm going to give you these things, but he's not a generous person. He's not doing these things for kindness or for bettering or for anything. He's doing them because he likes the attention of being the one who did it. Yeah. Yeah. If there's any sort of comparison, like a comic book comparison to be made uh, for um, Elon Musk, Elon Musk. Uh, it, I, Lex. it probably likes Luther more so than Tony Stark, yeah. even though people have said that people have said that oh, about God. Uh, amazon guy also oh uh jeff bezos yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. i think a, another part of why musk has gotten such notoriety i mean he, the reason we're talking to him is because we're we also have this culture on prevalent on social media mm. of motivation right and getting the gains and getting the get, the, uh, the the what's let's, that let's get this bread let's get this rise, bread, rise and grind. Let's uh, get this bread. <laughs> the grind the grind mentality yeah. the grind set that's what i was looking for and you know you see the little shorts the little reels and everything and they got the badass music and all that mm -hmm. but all that cuts out the fat of what he's doing, who he's stepping on, who he left behind. You brought up the origin, as it were, mm -hmm. of how he got his wealth. There's, <laughs> no, there's no such thing as an ethical billionaire. It was a is a phrase that I've seen recently. Yeah, I mean, if if not for the what you were just saying about the who you have to step on to get to this area to this point, blah blah blah. The idea of just proper wealth distribution, and I'm. I'm not an economist. I don't know. What, I don't know what wealth distribution means. I don't think we're all <laughs> supposed to have an equivalent amount of money or whatever. But I mean, no one should have the amount of money as a nation. And I mean, that's mm -hmm. happening. I mean, I don't I don't know. Again, I, I don't understand how politics and, and distribution and wealth, blah, 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 blah. I don't know how these are things are supposed to operate. But I mean, that phrase, there's no such thing as an ethical billionaire. That makes sense. That, it's oh no my... big deal that you don't know. Thank you, Siri. Thank, thank you, thank you, British male Siri. <laughs> was wait, was um, British male Siri actually responding to what you no, said? I mean, it, I pushed the button so it heard what. I... Okay, that you don't know. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I I don't pretend to understand these things. Yeah, and I say that I don't pretend to understand these things. Other people will pretend to understand these things. Musk will pretend to pretend to have the status he does you know actually wants to blah 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 i'm yeah. I'm, I'm stepping on my words now i'm sounding less eloquent but basically all of the all of the conversation that we've had these past 10 minutes about this it's i mean it's all a show and they mm -hmm. kind of know it but enough people are falling for it or e either falling for it or just bl blatantly supporting it not not blindly just yeah we know it's a show we like the show that's, yeah that's you know that's how it is sometimes that's, you know that's what's so bizarre I'm sure to me sometimes. i'm sure that's going on with kanye too i'm sure oh people are god. like oh my god he's going crazy yay he's in his crazy era yeah. let's go crazy Con like yeah i'm sure that that's not losing support by a number of people mm -hmm. and that's just, i mean that's just the way it is you can't you think beyond telling people the facts and you know giving them the the side the other side or just you know what's going on like People are gonna say, "Yeah, I like this though." People are gonna say, "Yeah, I like Batfleck though." <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't stop it. You've told me all these things, but eh, it's for me. Just like, I mean, it's not for me, right? That, I, was, that was Batfleck, but also Musk. Yeah. I'm Again, stepping on toes and et cetera, et cetera. I'm always so um, confused and find it bizarre when things are very transparent, you know, and you you can see through it, and it makes me wonder: is there something hidden that I'm missing? You know, whether okay. it be elon musk or what kanye has been saying you know i mean i obviously those are two very polarizing figures yeah, well, two yeah. very different but very, very relevant and different like news like now but not necessarily related but. yeah but the my thing is is uh, when things seem to be so transparent or uh, so apparently wrong i look for the hidden thing behind it and i uh, and then i just do go in circles go in circles of f hyper focusing on this thing that's wrong and it just it fucks with me i mean it's crazy it's a lot of the i want to do something but I, don't, I, don't, I can't do anything what am what am i gonna do sitting in south pasadena to do anything for elon musk to to counteract <laughs> what's happening anything i mean revered brought i mean like all the people bashing musk 
are still talking about Musk. Yeah. All the all of the hate is just attention. The the whole there's no such thing as bad press. Like I mean, if we're talking about them, they're important. Right. So yeah. Well, that that gets me to thinking about like when think when people get like canceled, for instance. Kanye is a great example. Mm-hmm. You know, Kanye is someone who for the past. Uh, I said decade, but it might be ever since his mother passed away, he's been going off the handle, saying all these things and build. It seems like building up. I don't get it. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) But shit, man, I don't know. (laughs) I mean, basically, uh, the, what you, the way the the phrase you use picking favorites is, I mean, no one is perfect. And every, I mean, the, to, we were we, we people will cancel one person for one thing and f- like another person for that either that same thing or disregard what they're doing i mean it's it's a whole can of worms that i don't i don't even know where to begin on but i mean yeah. people are going to like who this again this people are going to like who they like and not like to be told no right so that i mean that that's one of the big things people don't like to be told stop doing this thing to, like you can't you can't like this person anymore because evidence right it's like I, I didn't know evidence was even a thing i still like this the whole separating art from the right. artist whatever yeah so that also <laughs> yeah that's why consistency Again, I I is I impossible i didn't get this. to a point there i no, just said a no, bunch of things it's true but, it's true though mean, it's true that's why when people try to remain consistent it falls apart because they're not consistent on say another person uh-huh. another company another fucking politician even you know consistency is an ideal it's not a reality when it comes to holding people accountable you know in, in my opinion there how a, i look at it there was a thing a throwaway thing that i mean like a shit post or whatever just a phrase that was um we we were never supposed to know all of this stuff about each other. Right. And I think I mean that's what what you said about consistency. I think that falls into the uh, into that phrase into that mentality of like if we all were a bit less open, if we were a bit less, if a, a bit more anonymous uh, to the general populace, but were closer with the people we were like close with. If we didn't have like celebrities and like, I guess not. I guess not. Not have celebrities, but not like talk non-stop about celebrities and try to find out all of the things and all the right. nitty-gritty like all these things that are definitely problematic you know pe- people do bad things you know it would it would stay down and i guess you're see i, I want to backtrack now because sometimes things really should come to light i guess i don't know i don't i don't i don't want to talk about all this right now because yeah. i don't i don't have the full understanding but what yeah. comes to mind is the amber johnny thing the amber heard johnny right, depp yeah. thing both of them suck. They both right. did awful things in that situation. It was a toxic relationship. Yeah. That you know it could have ha- leave. Like they're both they're but they're both very wealthy celebrities. They could have just left each other if there was a bad situation happening. And you know, yeah, it's important to know about abuse, and we need to know there if there are people if there are bad people, so we stay safe from the bad things happening to us. But. We didn't like the 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 level at which we were told everything. I mean, it's a trial. It's supposed to be public. We're not supposed to hide things. Yeah. I, I'm I I I'm back tra- I, I I'm stepping over my toes again on a thing that I didn't watch. I didn't. I yeah. I wasn't there. I wasn't participating in any of that. I just know it yeah. happened. But I mean, I guess the point I'm trying to make is like, we don't need to be as open. And personal things sh- can and should stay personal. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah. I feel. I feel. I feel like I've contradicted myself several times in this over in this overall discussion ever since we left the yo mama section <laughs> um let's go back to the yo mama in, section yeah, it was it was safe it was familiar <laughs> amber um, heard yo mama johnny <laughs> Depp, yo no! mama oh <laughs> uh, yeah no i get i understand where you're coming from i see what and that's something i didn't where even I'm try, where i'm trying to well from. yeah <laughs> no i i get i get what you mean um that's a very interesting point of we weren't meant to know as much about each other as we do. That we're is just, a very interesting we're just point. So out there right now, and that's part, I mean, you mentioned it before. That's part of social media. Yeah, so it's, that's part of social media. I'll say muffled again, but in, 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 <laughs> in this the, time. That, thank you. Um, like we are behave. This generation and no, this generation and the and like bleeding back into the older generations are behaving so weird right now because of how our social setup is. Yeah. And 
you know, if we still got, if we still read the newspaper every week to know who died, things would be a lot different. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. I mean, which I mean, duh. I, I, of course. No. Yeah. I, I, I ended on that statement as if it was very profound, but I mean, of course. It's true also, though. Like also it's, it's true. Though. Yeah, it is because now we're all, we're wired. Mm-hmm. We're wired. We get the information like that. Yep. And that can, that's and that, a great and thing. And that's so good. It is it's, good. It's, it's like, it's like, uh, like knowing what's happening on the other side of the world and being able to communicate is so good. It like is. The, like that is not an unimportant thing, but it's just so drastically affecting us. It Well, it's a double-edged sword. Mm-hmm. It's a double-edged sword. I mean, it's good to know about imagine if we were living this year without any sort of idea about what was going on in Ukraine, right? Yeah. Be, that's technology. You know, technology afforded us that luxury of understanding what's going on over there, what's going on with, uh, uh, you know, the, the the elections coming up soon, the next week. It's, oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And there was there was just that election in, uh, not Venezuela, somewhere else. Where, where? Um, Lula was the guy, was the president, who... One and a bunch of people are upset, but like it seemed like, for for lack of a better phrase, the wrong people are upset. There was like some I see. some rally. Uh, uh, okay, you know, okay. Bit, bit, I, again, I don't know. And I, 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 we're in America, so we we miss a lot of the other yes. national stuff because we see ourselves up here, and a lot of other news that can reach us doesn't because it's not as important as right. Kanye or celebrities or mm-hmm. blah blah blah. Um, but I mean, what we do manage to get is still really important. Like knowing where there is strife in the world is a good thing to have. And technology has allowed that, but it is in, in, in the smaller circles still very, I'm going to say the word drastic again. A lot of people I think want to just waste time on with technology, yeah. you know, just wasting time is so nice though. It, it is kind of nice. <laughs> it's, it's a bummer. Cause... God damn it. <laughs> I need to do some suffering real quick. Oh, shit. Uh, well, I think that's where we're going to end. That's a great place to end it off. I think wasting time is nice. Wasting yeah. time is a perfect <laughs> yeah. way of doing I mean, that's what this podcast that's was. Good. It was great. I'm going to listen to this at work and it's going to be very cathartic. I think for me, because right. I will be at work listening to two people who work at, my work talking about things outside of work it'll be interesting uh (laughs) harrison thanks so much for having uh being on thank you for having me of course is there anything that you want to plug any places people want to find you uh (laughs) i have to ask sure uh (laughs) my instagram is over there i s o n over there sin that's basically all i got i mean yeah Yeah. it used used to be where is in the the pun was very not clever and it remained that but with a different title i like the new one thank you over there um yeah uh i mean that's that's instagram also sucks but that is social that is social media numero uno if you're looking for me Mm -hmm. um and I guess the other thing I want, I got, I live in Los Angeles and I am down to act in things you have to, you need actors for. Uh, I'm six feet tall at the moment. I'm bald and I'm a bit heavy set. So hit me up. Let, let me vouch. <laughs> let me vouch because we did a uh, Halloween photo shoot where you dressed up as Michael Myers. Oh yeah. That was and, fun. And it was a lot of fun. And you were the most convincing Michael Myers in the area. I'll, t- I'll take that. Because you, you you are a bigger guy, but all these other guys trying to dress like Michael, squ- like little, little fools, <laughs> like squatty. <laughs> You're not scary. The- Harrison as... Uh, Michael Myers is actually very intimidating. So thank keep you. that in mind when you're looking for someone thank for you, your horror you. film, your slasher film, uh, your romantic comedy. <laughs> Hit me up and I can send you a resume and maybe a reel, but pending on that one. We'll, we'll, we'll work on that. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. Harrison, thanks so much for uh, coming on. Thank you. Guys, thanks so much for listening. Have a good one. Stay safe. And goodbye. <laughs>